Hey, it's Jason Rogers here. And in this video, I want to talk to you about negotiating uh, the purchase of a business and common mistakes people make and what you really want to do to get this correct. So first thing I see so often with clients, it's a bad habit that most people fall into is they want to over negotiate something and to keep negotiating without there being an agreement in writing that's signed by both parties. Right. And so throughout the process of trying to buy a business, you're essentially going to find businesses that you'd like. You're then going to have usually an introductory conversation with the seller of a business that you may want to buy. And then shortly after that conversation, what you really want to do as the buyer is submit an offer. Usually this will be in the form of an LOI, a letter of intent. You want to submit that LOI. And what often happens with buyers, new buyers that don't really understand this process is they essentially will keep engaging with the seller and really trying to negotiate with the seller after having submitted that LOI, as opposed to simply letting the LOI do the talking and essentially saying, hey, look, either accept the LOI, counter with what you want to see, or I'm out. And so what often happens is, you know, sellers will get the buyer to basically believe, oh, yeah, we'll do a deal at this price or on these terms, but I don't really want to sign it just yet. Or they'll say, I'll sign it, but I won't have an exclusivity uh, piece in the LOI. Exclusivity is huge because it basically by keeping or by having an exclusivity clause in an LOI and your MA attorney will help you with all this. And by the way, I help you build a deal team. If you work with me and if you watch my videos, having a deal team is paramount and it includes an MA attorney that will help you with these things. But an exclusivity item on your LOI, your letter of intent, ensures that the deal is yours for the taking as the buyer. Huge point. I can't stress that enough. The deal needs to be exclusive to you so that you are the only buyer that this seller can negotiate with. But very often what sellers will try to do is they'll say, okay, we'll sign this, but you know, we do still want to be able to talk to other buyers, but we really think we're going to do a deal with you, but we just want to make sure. And therefore we want to be able to talk to other buyers. And a lot of rookie buyers will accept this, which is crazy. You cannot do it. You need to make your offer, include an exclusivity provision, and stick to that offer. And don't keep wasting time talking to a seller until they sign that agreement. I have a different client that wanted to just keep talking and talking and talking and talking to a seller. And I went on a call, actually enjoy my client. I do this for my premier clients. And I jumped onto the call with the seller and, and you know, my client, the buyer was there and the seller was there and the seller's rep was there and then I was there. And within about five minutes, I could already tell that there just wasn't going to be a meeting of the mind. And I remember, you know, my buyer wanted to pay about $3 million for this. It was a car wash. And the seller was saying, oh, you know, we want $5 million. And, you know, about 10 minutes in, I heard the seller essentially say, hey, you know, we already got offered 4.3, but we rejected that offer. And again, I knew my client wanted to pay about $3 million, maybe 3.5. As soon as I heard that, I immediately said, hey, do you know what? It sounds like there's no point for this conversation then, because if you've already rejected 4.3 million, then there's really nothing to say. We just don't believe this, this car wash is worth 4.3 million. Therefore, why don't we just end the call now? Now, the seller acted like, oh, well, maybe there's a play, there's an opportunity, there's a chance, but he had already said what he needed to say. He already said, we don't want to accept something less than 4.3. In fact, we've already rejected 4.3. What's the point I'm trying to make here? The point I'm trying to make here is if a seller tells you what their number is, and if that number is way off of what your number is, walk away. Don't keep wasting your time. My client, you know, didn't take my advice initially to be candid. And if you're watching this, you know who you are. And he kept engaging with the seller for a couple of weeks. And I was telling him, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You paid me to tell you what I know from all my experience. And if you want to waste your time and learn it for yourself, then so be it. But you don't need to waste your time. And that's what he did ultimately. And he learned the lesson. He would have learned it faster had he just listened to me candidly. But that's okay. It is what it is. Sometimes people have to learn that lesson the hard way. But hopefully for you, you can take this to the bank and really realize that if a seller wants an extremely high number that's way beyond what you think is reasonable, and if they refuse to budge in a meaningful way, and if they aren't taking the process seriously, if they don't seem motivated, walk away, save yourself the time, keep on the hunt for other deals where you actually have a motivated seller, because that's a huge part of actually negotiating a proper business acquisition is having a seller that's motivated to sell. A lot of sellers are what you might call tire kickers, right? They'll sell if the perfect offer came. 
but realistically, they don't really want to sell. They're not motivated. They don't need to sell. You want to deal with sellers that are motivated to sell. You're not trying to take advantage of them, but you're also not trying to get taken advantage of. Does that make sense? So look, here's the thing really with, with negotiation. Okay, number one, if it's not in writing, it doesn't count. Period, end of story. Solve for getting it inked. You need it inked. You need it in writing and you need an exclusivity agreement so that the seller can't shop his or her company to other prospective buyers. That's huge. And then secondly, if you're noticing that the seller is looking for an overinflated number and if they don't show a very quick willingness to lower their price or their negotiation, if they, if they don't meet you quite quickly on terms that are near where you want to be, then cut the rope and move on to a different deal. You don't want to waste your precious time over negotiating something that doesn't have a puncher's chance. There's a lot of deals out there. There are plenty of motivated sellers, but your time is finite. And so wasting your time on the wrong deal is one of the surefire ways to ensure that you don't get any negotiation successfully achieved, whereby you get a deal under contract because you're, again, wasting your time with the wrong seller. I can talk more about negotiation in another one if you want, but I'm going to cut this video right here. I think those are the couple of key points I wanted to share from some recent client experiences I've been having. I try to help my clients avoid these things, but sometimes people just want to... They want to test it for themselves, but my last piece of advice for you is if you're working with a true professional that's been there and done that in the game of business acquisition, take the advice and run with it. You want to stand on the shoulders of giants and learn from the mistakes of others. Don't You don't need to make your own mistakes to learn. Learn from the mistakes of others to shortcut the process. This is what winners do. They learn from others who have been where they want to go. They shortcut that process by taking that advice and applying that advice right out of the gate, and this saves time. Time is the ultimate variable. That all being said, if you want to learn more about buying businesses, go to jasonpaulrogers.com. If you like this video, thumbs it up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share your comments below, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care now.